lockdowns. Social distancing measures. And trillions of dollars in monetary and fiscal policies. Governments across the globe are putting in place unprecedented measures in the fight against COVID-19. But these can only help slow down the spread, while medical science works on a way to stop the disease. The vaccine is the ultimate solution to this. Um, everything else is temporary. If, if um, unfortunately, because of the prevalence of this, the contagious element of the coronavirus and the seasonal element to this that I'm, I'm anticipating, I, I, I genuinely believe that the only way to truly contain this ultimately is the vaccine. So that's why having these dozens of companies in this effort is very important. The race to find an effective vaccine involves researchers around the world. At this point in time, there are over 50 companies, five zero companies, uh, looking into developing a COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, so it's quite unprecedented. Uh, and I think it's a reflection not only of the seriousness of the pandemic itself, but the state of science and biomedical science in particular. And that they're all around the world. China, Singapore, is European countries, the US, and you have a whole range of companies from the very traditional big multinational biopharmaceuticals to small biotech companies. Governments and other groups have committed to hundreds of millions for vaccine research. But aside from cost, there are also questions over affordability and accessibility. It cannot be expensive, unfortunately, because this is going to be something um, that you have to, the government will pay for it most likely, uh, or insurer will pay for it. So it has to be very, very low cost. Um, this is something that is going to be very challenging. That's why what we understood is that there's only a few companies that's pursuing this route. I think in the case of COVID-19, we are looking at a uh, combined effort, you know, both from public and the private sector, uh, to look to find a, a cure for this and a vaccine for this. Arcturus Therapeutics, a biomedical company in the US state of California, is one such example. It's partnering with the Duke NUS Medical School in Singapore and the Singapore government for research on a vaccine for COVID-19. The company is working on a product which, if successful, could vaccinate a large number of people quickly and at a low cost. So right now, Arcturus is in the middle of manufacturing our vaccine. Uh, for human trials, and we are presently working with the HSA, or the Health Sciences Authority in Singapore, to identify a time for, those, for our first clinical trial. And that's going to be relatively soon. In the US and China, the first clinical trials on humans have already begun. This is just the initial stage in what is usually a long process. It's common for vaccines to take 10 to 12 years to make it to the market. But with the pandemic taking an unprecedented toll around the world, there are hopes that the timeline could be accelerated. In this kind of situation, you have to speed it all up uh, so that things are done in parallel. And generally, whereas trials might take uh, several months to years to go through, uh, for example, the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness uh, Innovation has set itself a very ambitious target that it can take this in 16 weeks to try and uh, do these kind of tests in parallel to find the same kind of information. And so this means that the regulatory authorities also have to change their approach in which they take the data on from the vaccine studies and they use what are called adaptive approaches or rolling submissions where small amounts of data based on the information found will come in uh, in sequence and they can sort of give provisional authorization along the way. So it is a very different paradigm to assessing vaccines uh, in this kind of pandemic situation compared to under normal circumstances. The urgency in this new paradigm has already been seen in the development of diagnostic tests. 
A kit developed by local biotech company, Meraxis, was put together in just three weeks. It's one of at least 16 different diagnostic tests that have been given fast-track approval in Singapore. Meraxis in February actually worked together with ASTAR and became the contract manufacturer for the COVID-19 test kit because uh, Meraxis has the lab capabilities to manufacture um, actually in bigger quantity. So for example, it's able to manufacture about 100,000 test kit per week, um, able to ramp up to about 300,000. But health authorities know that testing alone won't be enough to win this war. A vaccine could stop people falling sick and yet, even if there's a medical breakthrough, experts warn that there will still be issues over accessibility. Once we have the vaccine, who gets it first and why? Unfortunately, it's the person that's first in line. It's kind of a sad reality in life that sometimes the people that desperately need the vaccine will not necessarily be the first to get it. The other, of course, uh, issue that arises then is who can afford this vaccine? Because uh, if it is it's only developed countries and rich countries that are able to reach this stage, when in fact it's a global pandemic, then there is a major issue of if those populations with much poorer health systems do not have access to the vaccines, then in fact you are not able still to contain the pandemic and you would find successive waves of this going around. 